News came out today that Boston Celtics superstar Jason Tatum had called Damian Lillard recruiting him to come to Boston. Could a trade still maybe be done? We'll be talking about that, plus the Celtics signed Ukrainian sniper Sfi Mikhailuk to a contract. We'll be getting into all that on this edition of Celtics Digest. But before we get into any of that, first of all, a quick reminder to hit subscribe. If you're one of the hundreds of people who's watching who hasn't already done it, do it now. You won't regret it. But Bruce, the first topic we want to dive into before these other interesting topics is a potential JaVale McGee to the Boston Celtics signing. And there was an article today that came out saying that, look, the Celtics are reconfiguring their roster to contend for a title. He has championship pedigree, and he can add a bit of depth to that center position behind someone like Williams, Horford, and Kristaps Porzingis. I wanted to get uh, get your opinion on JaVale McGee, who had a bit of a down year last year. Do you think he could be a difference maker for the Boston Celtics, and do you think it's worth offering him a contract spot? Ultimately, I think the Boston Celtics could potentially look at adding JaVale, v- JaVale McGee to the Boston Celtics roster, but I don't think that the Celtics should be looking at him for their backup center position, in my opinion, because I think that his defensive uh, lackability has shown in recent years, and he's kind of fallen off in that aspect. And for a center for the Boston Celtics, we obviously have Kristaps Porzingis, Robert Williams, Al Horford, but... We need some more defensive efficiency on that side at center position. And with injuries as well, we need a solid center that can play. And I think that by looking at someone else along the lines of Blake Griffin, like we've mentioned in the past, how he's been on the Celtics teams in the past, I think he would be a pretty good person to bring back over JaVale McGee. JaVale McGee has the championship pedigree, which the Celtics could look at to add. But besides being a locker room presence, I don't know if he adds that much to this roster. Yeah, like Blake, while obviously not touted as a a top end defender throughout his career, last season put his butt on the line, for lack of a better term, right? He was Mm -hmm. taking charges left and right, being physical when he needed to be, eating up those precious minutes so he could save Al Horford. While JaVale, yes, has the, you know, sort of the history, the resume of a shot blocking center, he's well past his prime at this point, Bruce, and he's really looked like. You know, his his IQ, especially defensively, maybe wouldn't fit in with the Boston Celtics. So I think I fully agree with you. I think if the Celtics are going to offer this spot to anyone, it should maybe be Blake Griffin. But speaking of signings, Bruce, we got to get into the second signing. And the Celtics did sign someone today, and that's Svi Mikhailuk. Now, if you guys don't know much about Svi Mikhailuk, that is okay, because maybe not a lot of people do. But as Michael Scotto says, they signed him. He averaged 11 points in 22 and a half minutes a game for the Hornets last year. He also played a bit for the Knicks. And while his career numbers definitely aren't great, he's a solid three-point shooter, 42% from three last year, and when he got opportunities, he put up some decent numbers. Bruce, how do you see Svi Mikhailuk fitting in with the Celtics? Because to me, I feel like it's just a very, very solid move. I think he's going to be a great addition to the offense. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at our guard position, we have a lot of decent guards. But when you look at the backup two and three, we're kind of slotted in a pot spot where we need some depth there. Obviously, we have Malcolm Brogdon who can play, but he's on some injuries. And uh, we have Jalen Brown starting. And then we have Sam Hauser. And we have the pickup of O'Shea Brissett. But we don't really have another score off the bench. And I think C. McKaylee could do that. Like you said, he was averaging some great numbers last season. If he comes to the Celtics and he can shoot some great numbers for us i think he could slot himself as a nice backup two role on the celtics and maybe he could actually earn a nice longstead contract as he's kind of bounced around from some teams over the past couple years maybe he could find a home in boston once and for all yeah it's interesting because there were some reports i saw a reporter say he was shocked that speed decided to stay in the nba because most rumors said that he was heading over to europe but you know he's had stints with what like the pistons the lakers the raptors the hornets the knicks he's mm-hmm. been all over the place like you said but uh, I think you made a great point. Like, look at Sam Hauser, right? Sam Hauser really took over last year, and it was mainly because of his shooting prowess, right? Boston Celtics, especially someone like a Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum, they're quite good at driving into the lane, and they're improving year after year, especially like Derek White and Brogdon, too, at making that kickout pass. So having those lethal shooters, that's always something that's crucial to a championship team, and it just feels like even if speed just plays that kind of 10 minutes per game, but he can come in there and shoot 40% from three, that's kind of exactly what you want from one of your championship team bench pieces, right? Exactly. And we've even seen stints in the playoffs and in the regular season where Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have had some shooting slumps Mm -hmm. where some games they don't perform the greatest and we've had to see guys like Derek White or Malcolm Brogdon actually help out the Celtics to win a game so if Simi McKaylick were to you know catch fire from three and shoot you know six for seven from three one game he might be able to actually help the Celtics win a couple games and actually ensure a good spot on the team yeah it's one of those moves that maybe doesn't look like much on the surface but 
in one of those games down the stretch of the season, you're fighting for a high playoff spot. See, Mikhailu comes out, like you said, has a banger of a game, scores 15, 18 points, all from threes, momentum swings. That's all you could really ask for. But Bruce, we got to get into the big thing here today. This is the big news. And, uh, you know, it's been reported a while, right? We've all heard the Damian Lillard to the Boston Celtics rumors. But there was an article, not an article, sorry, a podcast today. Mark Spears came out and said uh, that J- or, uh, Jason Tatum has recruited Damian Lillard. said, I think at 33 years old, he looks at the landscape of the West, that being Lillard, and says, I think my chances are better to go out East. And, of course, oh, Miami made the finals without me, whatever, right? But Spears said during an appearance on the Sports by Northwest podcast, quote, and I know that Boston, I know Jason Tatum has called him trying to get in his ear, but his focus is definitely on Miami. Now, Bruce, look, Damian Lillard is a superstar. There's no other way about it. 58 games last year could have been a lot more if he wasn't shut down at the end. 32 a game, seven assists. He's a career 37% three-point shooter. One of the best shooters, one of the best scorers in the NBA. Jason Tatum clearly wanted him in Boston. And while Jalen Brown did sign the extension to make this trade a little more difficult, do you see a world where maybe Tatum, maybe Brown, the Celtics get together and say, look, this is our window. We got to pay Tatum in a couple of years. Chris Stapps is only under contract for a couple of years as well. Do we just go all in right now? I think there's a possibility that the Celtics could go all in now. You look at the contracts that they could use to match to get Damian Lillard, and you would have to use, obviously, Malcolm Brogdon, Al Horford, a lot of picks as well. But ultimately, the Celtics could have one of the best starting fives in the NBA if they were to attract Damian Lillard. And even though it would hurt the future of the team, the Celtics are in win-now mode and have been looking to be in win-now mode for the past couple years. So this could be the move to thread the needle to actually bring a championship to Boston if they were to look at it. Yeah, it's, it's weird, though, because, you know, when you make a move like this, the, the Blazers would definitely demand like four, five, six picks if they could. And You know, being Celtics fans, we're very familiar with that whole Brooklyn Nets trade where they're like, this is our window. We're going all in. We're going to go for our championship team and look how that turned out. So there's always that that bit of a scare right now. Obviously, Mm -hmm. the Celtics starting five of Lillard, Brown, Tatum, probably Williams and Porzingis. Not only is that maybe the best starting five in the NBA, that's one of the best starting fives of all time, if you ask. That is insanity, right? You have three, like four all NBA level players when they're healthy in the starting five. But... Is it worth mortgaging your future? Bruce, I'm going to ask you this. If the Celtics do that, and they trade pretty much every first-round pick for the foreseeable future, just like what happened in that famous Nets trade, if they win a title, do you think it's worth it? Depending on how deep we have to go in the future, I would have to consider it. But I think that if we were to win at least one title, I think it would be worth it, as the Celtics are a major franchise, and... As we've seen growing up watching the Celtics, we haven't really been as bad as we thought we were. After the 2008 season we saw after the championship, they kind of started to fall through. But then they got Isaiah Thomas, they found the diamond in the rough with him. And then they had Avery Bradley and guys like that alongside the Celtics to kind of boost them back up. And then they started just hitting on draft picks and got lucky with the Nets trades. So with the Celtics franchise, I think it would be... It would be a sting to obviously let go of the whole future to bring in a championship, but I think that they would have the possibility to bring it all back in future assets later down the line. Yeah, I, th- I think it's possible. And of course, Danny Ainge is, is gone now, but uh, Brad Stevens seems to be doing a great job so far. And mm-hmm. man, it would just be so fun to say, oh yeah, we got the lineup of Lillard, Brown, Tatum, Williams, and Porzingis running the five for the playoffs. I mean, it, it sort of is a pipe dream. I know that trade is almost impossible at this point, but since we found out today Tatum called Lillard, we figured we'd bring it back up to you guys and let us know what you think of that. Do you think the Celtics should still maybe pursue a Damian Lillard trade down in the comments? Because if they did, I think it could be very, very fun. But that'll do it for this edition of Celtics Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 100 subs. We are not far away. We really appreciate all your support. I'm Josh Goss, Ryko's Bruce Velez. We'll catch you in the next one.